Hi, the hot topic in the news this week is captaincy. Tradition dictates that a club will appoint a captain, an international team will appoint a captain. In fact, in life, every team has a captain or a leader. Teams who can't seem to pin down a captain seem to suggest it's not important. But in reality, is that not just a conclusion drawn by their own circumstance? In debate this week, I've heard people talk about it like it's not important. Well, it certainly was in the early 2000s. At the start of the Premier League era and into the early 2000s, it was clear that every team strived to have a real leader on the pitch. They stood out a mile. For example, Paul McGrath, Dennis Wise, Vinnie Jones, Colin Hendry. We could go through every squad. Every top team had a top leader. The top Premier League sides had players like Vieira. The Titanic battles we can all remember between Man United and Arsenal, Vieira and Keane summed up the club's desire to win and to beat each other. Between them, they lifted 27 trophies at Arsenal and Man United combined. Not bad for a total transfer fee of £7 million between them. Of course, there were great leaders across the world, including Fernando Herrero, Raul, Totti, Dunga, Deschamps, Radibi, De Boer, Simeone, just to name a few. Milan was still being guided by the ever-present and ever-consistent Maldini, whereas Berezi passed the armband to Maldini, it was seamless, but there was no forward planning. Of course, there was the heartbeat of the modern Barcelona team, Carlos Puyol. He was in charge of everything, desire, passion, the accepted level of ability, when and where to celebrate, even the way the shirts were tucked in. When you see these great players, you understand why these teams were champions, why they won countless trophies. The leader was there to drive these teams forward. A lot of this week's captaincy talk centres around John Terry. Villa fans are buzzing to have captain, leader and villain in their squad, and rightly so. Whatever you think of him as a man, as a captain, his ability is unquestioned. Aston Villa of the Championship have got themselves the captain of the Premier League champions. I don't think many people will now look past Villa as promotion favourites. No matter how fit he is, Terry will drag Villa up. Somehow, he will get the job done. Captaincy and the importance of it is questioned. So is it important? Do we just give the armband to the longest serving player? In examples of the top players, it is often that they are a long serving player. They understand the values of the club and the manager. So I understand why when the club chooses a captain, it naturally wants to give the honour to the longest serving player. But the need for a team to have a leader and the captain sure can't be questioned. If that's the case, it can't always be the longest serving player that becomes the captain. The questioning of the importance of the captaincy also seems to extend to the actual desire of players that want to win. Do they even care? A lot of this comes from fans' inability now to connect to players. The unmanageable wealth of players anywhere near to the top of the game has certainly driven a wedge between fans and the players. A football a footballer's desire is certainly questioned on a daily basis, especially in England and the Premier League. What is more important to them, the latest watch or winning the game for their team? La Ferrari, the best house, the best tattoo, money, and the current environment football has found itself in, certain on the surface, seems to be providing less captains. I am not sure that I buy that though. As a baby boy, you want to win. Your genes will keep that desire to win going. Even if your body language perhaps doesn't transmit this across in the stadium or across the social scene. When you look at the Premier League champions, you are not surprised to see the names of the players lifting the trophies at the end of the season. Nemanja Vidic at Man United, Vincent Kompany at Man City, John Terry at Chelsea and even Wes Morgan at Leicester. Leaders, centre-backs at the heart of the team. This tradition has not died, it is well alive. These are men that fans identify with. Despite the biggest fees going to the players putting the ball in the back of the net, the fans' heroes are always their captains. These captains are more in tune with the club's values and will always be given the biggest welcome when they walk through the hallways of their clubs. It doesn't change in Europe. In club football's biggest competition, the Champions League winning captains, Puyo and Xavi at Barca, Terry at Chelsea, Philip Lahm at Bayern, Casillas and Ramos at Real Madrid. Right at the top of our game, the captain is the first name on the team sheet. If you want to be successful, really successful, your captain is vital. Where Puyol, Puyol left domination in Spain, Ramos picked up the armband and took it to the next level. In a close game, he'll pop up with a winning goal. If he needs to make a tackle and get himself sent off, he will, for his team, and his teammates know that. 
The merry-go-round of managers is well alive, but when a manager steps onto the training ground, he must assess his players. Who is giving everything for the team? Who is switched on? Listening, willing to put into practice your masterpiece. Who is standing behind your back or whispering in the corner? They need to go. Who are the leaders? Who is your captain? Sometimes the captain is appointed by his peers. Terry was always the obvious option, whoever was in charge at Chelsea. But if you're going to win as a manager, you need your captain. If you're in a club, your captain is vital. Maybe that worked against Mourinho at Chelsea, but even with Jose's Messiah-like status, it did not outlive the legend that was John Terry. If you can't stick with a manager, at least try to find a captain who will stick with you. There is a huge investment from clubs into the next bright stars. Jadon Sancho, for example, an amazing talent. All of the top clubs wanted him and Man City won that race. Destined for the top. Destined to be the player everybody is talking about. Breaking through at a very young age. The sort of player who gets you out of your seat. But are there captains in your club? If you are invested in youth, are you invested in your next captains? Clubs are missing a trick if they're not planning for the future in terms of their leaders. Can you buy a leader? Or does that really work long term? When we look at our great captains, are they big transfers? When we look at Puyol, Maldini, Terry and Gerard, these great leaders have been part of the youth programme at their clubs, uh, or at least play some part in their academy, and seen from the youth level what the club needs to people surrounding it. Even with Vieira, he was plucked from obscurity at Milan, aged 20. From the moment he stepped on the field, he showed the passion and desire to lead the team. He seemed like an Arsenal player from the first moments in the shirt. These players represent and understand the true values of their clubs. They can't be denied. They, they identify with the fans, their commitment is unquestioned and they teach those values to their teammates. New signings, the next generation, they can be guided and inspired to play in the club's way. This makes gr a great cohesive team even after a bad day on the field. So when scouts are searching the world for talent, when they are searching for that tricky left winger, would they be best placed to search him for the next great leader? Of course it's hard. You see a 90-minute game or a two-hour academy match, but a lot of the basic personality traits jump out if you watch that player over a number of weeks. A good scout or coach can start to build a picture of where this player can fit into the club. Does the club have a potential centre-back in each generation who can transmit the club's values into the first team? Whether you're a scout, a coach or a young player, it's important to look at being a good leader. The values required in the search for talent or the quest to become more talented try to hold these values close to you. First and foremost, understand the values of your club. This will be key, but you must also consider when growing up in football, when coaching or scouting the key factors to being a good leader. Good, good leader. For example, good integrity, having clear goals, setting a good example to others, having a good view, vision of the future, being a good communicator, always expecting the best, being supportive of your teammates, always encouraging the team, giving others recognition, stimulating those around you, know what drives them to be better, focus on the team, never show that you're an individual, of course, inspire the other players. This is a quote that I love. Leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence and making sure the impact lasts in your absence. John Terry has certainly done that. While at Chelsea, even last season when he played just nine times in the Premier League, you felt he was still on the field. Do you want to come off the pitch having put 50% in and then have to face him in the changing room? The spirit was carried through. What Chelsea don't know is that li that lives on in the players he's left behind. They will certainly hope Cahill can take on his mantle as Mr Chelsea. As the guy who would jump on a bomb to save his team, when there is a tough moment next season, who will stand up and be counted in this team? So surely when you decide on your captain, it must be a considered monumental decision. When you look around the changing room, do you have that real leader? If Rooney goes at United, when Carrick is not around and Ibrahimovic has left, does Mourinho have someone to drive the players to the next level? As much as the fact he wants to bring in top stars, should he consider who that, le who that leaves in the dressing room? He will feel confident in his abilities to rally the team, but it's been shown to be really successful. You need a leader. You need a captain. Can you buy a captain? Because that seems to be the pattern. Pump money into the team, but are you really diluting your values? If you don't have a captain, can you look and plan for the future? Is there a captain in the 18s, the 14s, dare I say it, when you sign your players at under 9, do you have a future captain? 
maybe there is a player considered to be behind the others technically, but it must be worth the gamble to sign players at all ages that are mentally tough. Who will develop leadership skills in your coaching group? Most importantly, can you can your players transfer the spirit and values of your club from the fans to the academy to the team and to the trophy cabinet? If you are a young player, can you consider the values to be a captain? Can you make it a habit that you consider these when you train and play? Would Barca win on a cold Tuesday night in Stoke? Well, if they had Puyo in the team, damn right they would. Thank you for listening. If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and keep your eye out for more content in the future.